Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for tuning in to view our morning worship service this morning. Truly, indeed, God is good. We thank and praise God for allowing us to be here this morning. This morning, we'd like to just extend a, a warm welcome and, and warm praise unto God and to you all and, and ask that you tune in and pray that you get something out of the service this morning. But truly, indeed, God is good. God is good. This morning we have a wonderful word in store and, and we like to, to be prayerful for our communities, be prayerful for our nation, um, and continually lift those up that are in need upon this day. And, and so as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship service this morning, we'd like to, to look at God's word this morning and open up with the scripture and with prayer. Um, and this morning we have a wonderful reading coming from Psalms chapter 18. Verses 28 and 29, Psalms 18, 28 and 29. And it reads, you are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, I will exalt you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. I read into you Psalms chapter 118, verses 28 and 29. Now let's go before our Father in a word of prayer. Most graciously and heavenly fathers, we stand before you this day. Father God, we just give you thanks and praise, Father, for your mercy and for your grace. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this day that you have blessed and allowed us to rise and see. And Father God, as we stand here this day, God, we just want to lift up our hands and voices and give you praise, O Heavenly Father. Father God, we just pray, O God, you look down upon those that are sick and shed in. Look down upon those, O Heavenly Father, that are not saved upon this day. Father God, we pray for deliverance for, for, for this day. God, we pray for healing this day. And Heavenly Father, we ask, O oh God, you look upon our communities, look upon our city officials, our national leaders, O oh Heavenly Father. And we pray, O oh God, that you just bless them with wisdom, O oh Heavenly Father, and that direction that you would have for them to go. Father God, we pray for our spiritual leaders in our local churches, O oh Heavenly Father. And we ask, O oh God, that you just touch their minds and hearts this day, God, and give them a word that would deliver and then just uplift your people, O oh Heavenly Father. Father God, we ask that God you continue to lead down the rest us, God, in the direction that you would have for us to go. Continue to look over St. Paul, oh God, and just continually work in this ministry, oh Heavenly Father. God, the things that you would have for us to do. God, look over our pastor and our first lady. Bless and keep them covered, God, with your protection. Look over their families, oh Heavenly Father, and look over all of our congregation. And God, just keep us in this day. And Father God, we just give you all the praise, honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we have a song coming from Sister Julia McKenzie. She thought I was going to sing, but we're going to give it over to her. <laughs> Why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven?
God. Thank you, Sister Julia, for that selection. Truly, indeed, God is good. God is good. We just like to, to thank you all for tuning in here at St. Paul this morning um, and in our pastor's absence this morning. Um, but, but truly, indeed, God is good, and we continually ask that you pray for, for us here at St. Paul as, as we continue to pray for, for you all. Um, as, as we look out over our society today, we see, we see many things going on. We see um, many things in movement today, um, but we need to stay prayerful. We, we need to stay prayerful. Um, we, we here at St. Paul, we continually try to strive um, to do what God will have for us to do for our community, um, for, for those that are in need of our, 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 our community here in Amory. And we continually want to be what God would have for us to be. And, and, and that, is, that is one thing that is, that is truly possible um, when, when you have great leadership. And then that's why we want to thank our pastor, Pastor Mabry, for his, for his leadership and for what he is doing um, here at St. Paul. It's, it's not about him. It is, it's not about our First Lady, but it is truly about what God is working and doing through them to convey to this flock, to, to, to his congregation. And we thank our pastor for, for allowing God to use him in such a mighty way um, that, that he is making a difference in our community, in our lives, and in the lives of those that are viewing us live and those that that see him on a day-to-day -day basis, but we, we thank and praise God for the angel that he has blessed us with. And so as, as we stand here this morning, um, I would just like to encourage everyone, just continually keep your heads lifted up, keep your eyes lifted up um, unto God, for God is the only one that can deliver, deliver us and see us through these times that we're going through. Um, i like to share one thing this morning, um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad uh, Brother Woods is here. He, he would definitely understand this, and I know some of you viewing us live would understand this also. Um, but it is something how God takes us at a certain time, at a certain period in our lives, um, when we might think that we are, let's say, on the, the downhill or the, the road to retirement or that road that we see that um, maybe what we have done um, means little or means nothing um, to, to maybe the organization that we're in or, or maybe the, the congregation that we are in or um, the job that we're on. But it is something how God uses you at, at these times in your life when you think that maybe you're not impactful. Um, God blessing allowed me to have an opportunity and they're not going to say any names or anything like that, but God bless me, um, Brother Woods, and I had this opportunity to personally speak to a Brigadier General. Now, and, and, and I say Brother Woods because we're both, you know, in the military and some of you viewing us live, you know, maybe you understand um, the, the military in that sense, but uh, Brother Woods, you know as well as I do, you don't get to talk to a Brigadier General every day. You just don't call him up and say, hey, General, how you doing today? You know, if, if he don't call for you, you don't call for him. You might want to call for him, but you're going to go through a whole lot of folks trying to get to him. And the honest truth is, you probably ain't going to get to him because somebody else is going to answer that and say, this ain't worth going to the general. Uh, I answer this question because he's in that position. But it is, it is an honor. It is, um, it is something that um, when when God allows you to be in um, a, a certain position where you are allowed to speak out on something, and it grasps the ear of someone of that stature in that leadership position that they tell you, I want to talk to you. Give me your phone number. I want to discuss, you know, your viewpoint. I want to get a feel for how you think. 
And then so God blessed me and allowed me with that opportunity. And it was, um, you know, I consulted, you know, um, some, some mentors of mine. I even consulted my pastor, you know, and it was like, you know, my, my nerves is kicking Brother Woods and it's like, you know, I don't want to say the wrong thing because, you know, I'm talking to a two-star general here. You know, you want to, you know, this man might make a phone call and say, hey, <laughs> I want him gone. <laughs> you know, and you are representing, you know, your organization. So, you know, God blessed me with that opportunity and, 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 and God gave me the words to speak in. And it was dealing with racial disparity um, and, and what we are dealing with in our society now. And so God blessed me with that opportunity and it was, it was eye-opening and, 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 and I thank God that I had the general's ear where he listened to me um, and, and actually took my words to heart um, and actually asked for advice himself. You know, and you don't get to give a general, Brother Woods, advice. You know, and so I, I say this to say this, you know, regardless of your position in life, regardless of your position on your job, you need to know and understand this, that people are watching you. People are listening to you. And we have to be very cautious about our attitudes and our actions and how we behave and in how we carry ourselves because people are watching. And so when people are watching you, if you come off as that raging mad Christian, I don't want to talk to you. They don't want to fool with you. But if you come off as that wise, um, maybe you have anger in you, maybe you are upset about something. But as we discussed in the Sunday school lesson this morning, what comes out your mouth is God's will and purpose. And so people are watching you. And when you're given that opportunity on whatever stage that it is, you need to make sure that you are representing one God, representing the Lord that you say you serve. Secondly, make sure you represent yourself. But what's most important is lastly is represent the organization or that job that you're in and make sure that you don't bring an embarrassment upon that organization or upon yourself and most importantly upon God. And so we have to make sure that we're representing um, the, the Lord that we say that saved us and freed us. You know, make sure that we're representative to ourselves and to the organization that we're in. And so I just want to encourage you all, when you have the opportunity to speak out on injustice, on racial disparity, on things that are holding us back as a nation, as people. Um, and I'm not just talking about blacks, I'm talking about whites, I'm talking about Hispanics, I'm talking about all races um, that we have classed people as. When you have that opportunity to speak out, speak out. But I say this and I say this lovingly, don't speak out ignorantly. Don't speak out as people would classify us. Um, speak out with intelligence. Speak out as you know your facts. Speak out factual. Um, know what you're saying and how you're going to say it. And be purpose-minded and driven and decisive about what you're saying. That gets the ear of that person that you're talking to. And it's very hard for someone to rebuke against facts and truth when you land it all out on the table, you know. And so only thing they can do is lie. We see that day to day. Amen. Forgive me with our president. We see it constantly. But we can't let that be a way of life for us. We have to stand for Jesus Christ. And I say that because, and I know y'all probably wonder, Red, why are you going all off on this? It's just in my heart to say it. And, and unfortunately, it's going to get off into the sermon. I ain't even got there yet. Um, but we have to speak out in a sense that we cannot let lies, um, misinformation, be the daily way of life. 
that is not representative of what Jesus tells us to be as Christians. And I say that to say this, as Christians, some of us ought to be ashamed because we say we represent Jesus, but we so quickly will endorse lies. If you're gonna represent Jesus Christ, I don't care about your political views, I don't care about all that. Represent Jesus Christ. Because if he's lying now, he's gonna lie then, and the only thing you're doing is, and I'm gonna get into this in my sermon, um, you are just bound down and accepting what the devil is throwing at you. And it is perverting the word of God. And that is all that we're doing. And I say this, and I say this pointingly, I say this decisively, and I say this directly. As so-called Republicans, that is all you are doing is perverting the word of God. You're perverting the word so much that your character, what you say you stand for as a Christian, is being perverted by lies. So how can I look at you and say that you are a representative of Jesus Christ if you just agree with every lie that pops up? We have to represent Jesus. We have to represent Jesus. And so that is, I'm just speaking from the heart this morning. I might get myself in trouble. Deacon McKenzie, some of y'all might be hitting the dislike button, but hey, it is what it is. The truth is what it is. Um, and then, and if I do get myself in trouble, that's why I got a pastor. That's why I got a leader. He can come back and clean it up and get me out of trouble. Um, and, and that's why I thank God for a good leader. But we have to represent Jesus. We have to represent Jesus. We can simply say the lesser of two evils. Okay, what, what does that mean? Because if, if your political views outweigh your Christian views, what really does that say about you? You know, what really does that say about you? You could promote hatred, um, and you can easily say, well, he didn't say it like that. Well, your actions say otherwise. Um, so we need to represent Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to leave that alone. Uh, and and as, as, as I looked through this week and, you know, what all I was dealing with this week, and, and I told Deacon McKenzie about some of it earlier, um, it, it was funny because um, Brother Woods, I had a two-week military virtual leadership course going, and we had to be in front of the computer every day in uniform, and we're going through this course. I had conference calls going on with my job, um, had, had payroll issues, a new payroll system we were doing on my job, and so we got all this stuff going on, and um, me and my wife got our business, so we're dealing with that, and, and then, you know, I'm dealing with Sunday school, I'm dealing with sermon, and, you know, you got everything going on. Well, I told Deacon McKenzie, my wife probably heard me back there. Um, so as a jury, I, I was studying my Sunday school lesson. You know, went through my little routine, so as a jury, and I done highlighted. Brother Woods made my notes, done went through the lesson. So I'm all prepared. And, uh, thank you, Dick. And so, uh, sat down, you know, to, to type out my lesson from my notes, so as a jury. And then opened up my Sunday school book. Y'all know what the day is, don't you? September the what? 27. Right, right. September 27. So, Jerry, I done flipped through my Sunday school book. I ain't got nothing highlighted. I said, wait a minute, Lord, I know I ain't losing my mind. I just went through my Sunday school lesson Tuesday. You know, Wednesday, so, Jerry, and I didn't highlight it. I said, Lord, I know I ain't going crazy now. I know I got a lot going on, but I ain't going crazy. The Lord said, flip some more pages. So the jury, I flipped. November the 29th. I said, Lord Jesus, I done studied the wrong lesson. <laughs> so thank God that when you had a word in you and you, you know, uh, I flipped back. I said, Lord, I'm glad I know this lesson, God. <laughs> I'd be in trouble coming come in the morning trying to get up and teach a lesson. I ain't prepared for Brother Wood. I said, but Lord, I, I thank God I read ahead in my lessons that I know, you know, what the lesson is dealing with. And so I flipped back. I said, well, 
I got to do it all in one day now. You know, I got to highlight, make notes, type up, and get my presentation ready. Uh, but, but God is good. And so, thus I was prepared. And, and then out of all of that, uh, you know, thinking, Lord, I still got to get to my sermon. I still didn't know Pastor done told me, you know, he already told me earlier in the week, uh, you got it Sunday. You know, and, and, and I love my pastor, but, 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 but brother, brother Ronnie, that's how he'll drop it on me sometime. <laughs> you got it Sunday. You know, and, 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 but, but I thank God that, you know, that, you know, even in my pastor's absence, um, you know, and thankfully, you know, he's spending time because, uh, you know, he has anniversary. Um, and so he's putting in that time with, with his wife, Sister Mabry, and, and that's a blessing. But, but it is something how, you know, and this is where we have to make sure that we're studying, that we're in God's word, that, that we're listening um, to, to what God is telling us. Um, and, and, you know, and this was something that God has just not let me out of yet. He ain't let me out of this verse yet. And this is John 3.16. He hasn't let, let me out of it yet. And, and, and so even though I didn't get to put the time in that I thought I should put the time in with, because that would have only made me um, somewhat deficient because I would have been relying on my notes. Mm -hmm. You know, I would have been relying on, you know, just this. Um, but even though I have this, God has given me that word um, um, in, in my mind, in my spirit, and, and he has just continually um, conveyed thoughts to me and, 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 and showed me things out of this. And, and I, I can say, you know, yes, we might have it today, um, but, but Dick McKenzie, next time I get to speak, it might be another one again. I don't know. Um, but, but looking at John 3.16, John 3.16, and then I know we're all familiar with this scripture because we've heard it over and over and over and over and we should have it in our hearts, we should have it in our souls, and we, this should just vibrate through us as, as Christians. But it says, for God so loved the world, that what? That he gave his only begotten son that whoever, no matter if you black, white, Hispanic, no matter what your race is, whoever, slave, bond, free, believes in him, should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. John 3.16. Now as I was looking, when I, when I um, started taking notes on this lesson and, 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 and going through this, this, this scripture um, for about the third time, I believe, um, it, it came to my mind about a lease agreement, a lease agreement. Um, and, and, and when I thought about this lease agreement, Sister Jerry, I thought about, you know, this is, a, this is an agreement you sign between a landlord and a tenant. And this tenant agrees to live in this rental property for a certain period of time. And so I started to look at people around me. And, 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 and I saw that, that many people around me, and what I saw was that many have signed a lease agreement with the devil. Many have signed this agreement with the devil. And they are stuck in this lease because they can't see no other way out. But not only that, my brothers and sisters, not, not only that for y'all viewing us live, the devil has given them a lifestyle that they can't afford to give up. And so they continually pay this lease. They continually stick in this lease. Now, now, now what do you mean uh, that, that he has, has, has given them a lifestyle? Um, once again, don't want to call no names, but I do know, I do know 
some people that, that, that are living in this lifestyle in the club on the pole uh, to pay for college. I do know some that, that, are, that are on the corner selling drugs because they see no other way to get a job. I, I do see some that, that are popping their trunks, selling out stolen merchandise because they don't have a job. So they see no other way to do it but to, but to steal and, and to, to bootleg merchandise and, and sell it. And you can let your imagination just go on and on and on and on and think of different things that, that people are doing. And, and their, their mindset is so enslaved um, that, that the, 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 the way they look at it is, if I quit, Deacon McKenzie, if I quit, I can't afford the things that I have. And I see no other way to survive. And, and it's, I got to do what I got to do. Have y'all ever heard anybody say that? I got to do what I got to do. But I'm here to tell you today that God lovingly and compassionately gave us his only begotten son that we may have a better lifestyle and beyond that to have everlasting life. And, and there are benefits, there are benefits that we, that we have that comes with our devotion to Christ. And, and it is something how the enemy wants to, to steal that from us. And so this morning, my, my topic this morning is, is very simple and just straight to the point. Counsel the least. Counsel the least. Counsel the least. Now I want to make sure that you all understand this word counsel. And as we look at, at this topic this morning with, with John 3.16, this word counsel means to neutralize or negate the force or effect of another. In reference to a lease or a contract, it means to make it no longer valid or effective. Counsel a lease. Now, now, my first point this morning as, as we look at counseling this lease is when we look at the enemy, we're going to look at the false intent. The false intent. And we need to understand that the devil plays to our sensual side. If it feels good, if it tastes good, uh, you just got to do it. You just got to have it because, hey, you know, this, this feels good to my senses. And so, the devil, he, he might have promised you the penthouse, but here's the thing about that penthouse that he has promised you. It has a false elevation. It has a false position. And then what I'm saying is this. You may be thinking you all up on high when in actuality you are low in elevation and you got one leg in the pit. And the devil is tugging at your leg to get you all the way in. Oh, yeah. and, and, and so, Deacon Run, I, I understand what, what the saints of old used, used to sing and say. Um, that Jesus reached way down and, and, and picked me up. Oh, yeah. But I want to add this and say that sometimes Jesus got to pull us out. Mm-hmm. Not only reach down and pick us up, but sometimes he got to pull us out. And see, the devil gives us this false sense of accomplishment, of, of love, of success, while at the same time he's pulling us away from the promises of God. And we see a lot of that going on today. Pe- people are latching on to this, to this political view, to this perception, um, um, th- this notion um, that they have of, of self-proclaimed freedom, of, of rights, uh, of I got to express myself. Um, and, and at the same time, it is pulling us away from our beliefs. It's pulling us away from the promises of God. It's pulling us away from equality for all. And so now we're being enslaved to this idea um, of, of injustice, of, of not treating folks right. Um, and, and so we're just getting pulled out. We're getting pulled further and further away from God. Now, I want to ask you a question this morning. Have you ever rebelled against something that you knew was right or that your parents taught you when you was younger that was right? Now, listen to me, that was right and biblical. 
Now let me give you an example. Some things I heard when I was young. Brother, it's okay, everybody's doing it. Man, she fine. Ain't nothing wrong with a little fooling around. Just one puff ain't gonna hurt you. Man, I drive my best drunk. I get you home. And, and my, my favorite one, I even mess up and use it myself. If you love me. <laughs> Had to tell on myself on that, Pastor Mabel. And, and, and then the, the, the last one, Brother Wood, oh, uh, man, you grown now. You, well, look, Brother Wood, we still hear that in the day. I'm grown now. Okay. Yeah, I'm teaching my kids some lessons about being grown. See, see, see young people, it, it's, it's this. The enemy works on these small ways, these small things to pull you away from Jesus. It all plays to, to your need of, of, of inclusion, to your need of love, making you accept and do things because of social norms or romantic desires. Look at our society today. Social norms. This, this, this need we have to express ourselves is, is delusional, is, is, is hurting people, um, is, is expressing this, this, this hatred, um, this, this separation. Uh, we, we got all this going on. But just because everybody else is doing it, it don't make it right. Just because it's socially or politically right today in this climate, it doesn't make it right. How does it line up with the word of God? Is it justified by his word? If you can flip God's word over, and tell me somewhere in the scripture where God tells you it's right for you to hate folks. It's right for you to mistreat people. It's, it's right for you to, 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 to call people certain names. It's right for you to do all this. If you can find that in the Bible, I'll change my belief. But you ain't going to find it because it's not in there. Be because here's the commandment. And it simply deals with love. Love God, love thy neighbor. Love God, love thy neighbor. It didn't say, and y'all correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm sure I got some Bible scholars that are here in the sanctuary, and I got some that are viewing us live. Y'all can chime in and leave a comment. But tell me where it says, hate God, hate thy neighbor. Now that's a commandment. Hate God, hate thy neighbor. Is it there? Is that commandment there? God gave us his son. But some of us, we, we so quick to sell off our inheritance. Hear me now. We so quick to sell off our inheritance for a quick moment of worldly pleasure for this worldly idea of prosperity and inclusion. We want to sell off what God has blessed us with just for this one moment. Just for this one time frame, we'll sell it off. Because we want to be included. We want to feel a part of. Um, uh, we want to have this displeasure. And it's all what? It's all to our detriment. I look at the world today and I see how easy it is for people to get caught up in material gain. And in this new age of political strife. But guess what? It's nothing new. But now we see such a disregard to the belief in Christ for the gain in this day. People would rather gain wealth. They, they'd rather uh, begin, gain political position. And they'd rather relish in, in this inequality and think that it is a substitute for faith and that it's a substitute for reliance on the Lord. But once again, it's nothing new. This ain't nothing new. The enemy is selling people off on this notion of that, that as long as I have or I achieve, hear me, this false dream of success and this inclusion in certain parties or organizations, I don't need Jesus. He, the devil, has trapped you in this lease. 
But I want to tell you this one thing as I get to my next point. Break it. Break it. Break that lease. We have fallen into this social conditioning trap of self-reliance and self-vindication. And the enemy is relishing um, in, in this willful defiance that we have on our dependence of the Lord. We need Jesus. God gave us his son for a reason. Now, why did he do that? John 3, 16, why did he do that? Why did God give us his only begotten son? He gave us Jesus to be a prophet in our lives, to be a priest in our lives, to be a king in our lives. And therefore, we must give up ourselves to be ruled, to be taught, and to be saved by him. Now, now Sister Jerry, I ain't trying to pick on you, you know, but... but we, we have, you know, this, we had this women movement, you know, um, about independence. Ain't nothing wrong being independent. Ain't nothing wrong being independent. But you're also dependent at the same time. You're dependent on who? On Christ. And I say that to say this because we see so many today, you know, we, we, we independent. We don't need this. We don't need that. We can speak against this. We can speak against that. We need to understand and realize that we are still dependent upon Jesus. Kids, you are still dependent upon your parents. No matter how grown you think you done got, you still dependent upon your parents. Now, I know I said earlier, we're going to break this lease, break it. When, when I look at this lease, and then I looked at a, a residential lease, there are five ways that you can break a lease. Help you all out a little bit. There's five ways you can break a lease. The first way is, is the property is in violation of, of habitability standards. Simply meaning, it's inhabitable. It's, it's run down. Um, you can't stand in it. Big old hole in the roof. Hole in the floor. Rats running around. You can't stay in it. The landlord, secondly, the landlord violates rules of entry or harass the tenant. Can't just come in there when you feel like a man told me you come and collect rent. He, he, you harassing me. The tenant, thirdly, the tenant is um, active due to military. The tenant ain't there, been activated. You know, that is, is laws in place for that. You just can't kick folks out, dig them again. Look, I'm activated, just can't kick me out. Um, victims of domestic violence. I'm sure y'all can grasp that one. And then the apartment is illegal. It ain't his in the beginning. And you rent me something that don't belong to you. What exactly is the enemy promising you in this lease? Not a thing. How can the devil promise you something that don't even belong to him? Amen. Only thing you're doing is losing out on life. It is, it is interesting how I get paid on every Thursday. Brother Woods, it's interesting how I get paid every Thursday. But you know what also is very interesting, Brother Wood? How can you promise me a paycheck when you ain't even my boss? How can you promise me a paycheck when it's already predetermined, it's already agreed upon that if I go to work Friday to Thursday, Every Thursday, I get paid according to company guideline. How can you, not being a part of that, now, now I hope y'all can, can, can listen with the third ear and read this. How can you, not being a part of that organization, not being in no position in HR, not being a part of no leadership position that signs my check, Brother Woods, how can you promise me a paycheck on Thursday? Now y'all tell me where they do that at. How can you promise me a paycheck? 
See, what I'm saying is, how can the enemy promise you something that don't even belong to him? That is why you got to break the lease. Break it. Break it. And, and, and I'm going to show you how. It's some fine print. Now, yes, the enemy meant it for your bad. The enemy wants to trap you in this lease. But it's some fine print at the bottom of that lease. And what I'm telling you here this morning is, sign a new lease agreement. My last point, sign a new lease agreement. There's some fine print at the bottom of this lease. And there's a clause. See, there's a clause at, at the bottom of this lease. And, and that's where the enemy traps us a lot of times, um, uh, you all, because we don't read the fine print. And see, there's some fine print at the bottom of this lease that the enemy didn't place on this lease, but God did. See, God expressed his love and gave you and I a permanent solution and way out of this life-draining lease. And what does that fine print say? John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. While the enemy is promising you this false happiness, this false success, and all the highlights of this great life, the truth is you perishing. And the truth is the enemy ain't got nothing that he can promise you. So God said whoever believes in his son should not perish. But not only that, shall have everlasting life. So I say to say to you this morning, let Jesus be your guide. Let Jesus show you that there is a better way. He can deliver. He can set you free. All it takes on your part is one simple thing, to believe. Change your direction and get a new path. Achieve success the right way. Live a life within your means. Too many of us living outside of our means. We stress. We in debt. Live within your means and don't be stressed out. Have relationships and friendships that are wholesome in the fear of the Lord. There's a better way, and that way is the Lord Jesus Christ. But here's the thing. You cannot hold anything back. My son plays for the Amory Panthers, Amory High School, and, and, and our coach here, Coach Glenn, he, he has this, this, this slogan that he put on the back of some T-shirts, and the slogan says, all in. All in. Now, I want to use that slogan this morning and say all in. You got to be all in with the Lord. And he shall direct your path. So I say to you this morning, counsel that lease with the devil. Break it. Sign a new lease with the Lord Jesus Christ and be all in. All I'm simply saying is this. You've allowed the devil to be your landlord for so many years. Counsel that lease. Let the Lord be your landlord now. Be his tenant and live according to his purpose. See, we got to counsel that lease. And, and God gave his only begotten son on that cross, sacrificed himself. For who? For you and I. He gave himself for you and I. Did he have to? No. But he did. Why? Because he loved us just that much. And because of that love, he made himself a sacrifice. He gave his life for you and I. But then the wonderful thing is, the, the wonderful thing is, is that on that third day after he gave his life, he rose. That's right. And he rose with all power in his hands. Yes, sir. And through that, he set you and I free. Yes. Nothing can hold us back. Nothing. And if we are covered by the love and the blood of Jesus Christ, we have the victory. So why, I ask you, why are we still in this lease with the devil when the devil has no grounds, he has no property rights, he has no Nothing legal to hold us in that lease. 
The only thing that's holding us in that lease is you. That's the only thing holding us in that lease. But at any time, if you just scroll to the bottom of that lease, you'll see at the bottom of that lease, John 3, 16. And then Jesus is there to set you free. And so all I'm saying this morning is, is let Jesus be your new landlord. Let Jesus set you free and live a life according to his purpose, not according to the purpose of the enemy. Live according to his purpose. Why? Because God is able. God is able, and we serve a good God. We serve an awesome God. And so I say unto you this morning, if you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, I implore to you this morning, give your life to him this day because he's able and he's willing to save you and set you free from all that you're going through and all that you're dealing with. And there's no problem that you're dealing with that is too big for him to bring you out of. Amen. And so this morning, I just want to offer a word of prayer as we close out this morning. I just want to offer you a word of prayer, a word of encouragement that, that you can do better than what you're doing now. And Jesus Christ is there with arms open wide, waiting on you to give your life to him. Dear Heavenly Fathers, we stand before you this morning. We just want to give you thanks and praise, Father, for your mercy, for your grace. Father God, we thank you, O God, for this day that you have blessed us with and allowed us to rise and see. And Father God, as we stand here this morning, God, we just want to pray for those lost souls, O Heavenly Father. We want to pray for those that, that are, are, are stuck in these sinful habits, O Heavenly Father, and that don't see any other way out. God, that the enemy has them doing things, O Heavenly Father, and has them trapped in this lease, O Father. And God, we just want to just implore you, O God, just touch their minds, touch their hearts, O Heavenly Father, and just, just show them, God, show them the light. And Father God, show them, O Heavenly Father, that there is a better way. And Father God, we just pray, God, for those, God, and we just ask, O Heavenly Father, that you allow them, God, to, to come to your son, Jesus Christ, God, as, and, and just be in this relationship with him that they can have him, O Heavenly Father, as their Lord and personal Savior. And Father God, we just pray, O God, that you would just touch them this day, God, and just set them free. And Father God, we praise you, O Heavenly Father, how you continue, have continually guided us, God, and worked in our lives, O God, that we can be that example that you would have for us to be. And God, we just pray, God, that you just indwell in us, O Heavenly Father, and just touch our minds, God, and give us the words to speak and, and how we need to express ourselves and just convey your word, O Heavenly Father, that that others that, that hear your word, God, that they will just be touched down to, to their bones, touched down in their hearts, O Heavenly Father, that they will give their lives to you. Father God, we just pray for our nation. We pray for our communities. God, we pray for our leaders, O Heavenly Father. Just continue to bless them and guide them, O God, that they can, can share your word, O Heavenly Father, and they can just express upon, upon your people, O Heavenly Father, the importance, God, that we have in serving you. And God, we just pray, oh God, you continue to be with us, continue to lead this ministry here at St. Paul, continue to be with our pastor, continue to be with our congregation. And then, Father, as we look unto you for guidance, God, we look unto you for leadership. And God, we just give you all the praise, God, and for all those that are viewing us live. God, whatever needs that they have, we ask that you touch them now. God, if there's anyone that is viewing us now that is sick, oh, Heavenly Father, we ask that you grant them a healing right now. If anyone is distressed, oh, God, or having suicidal thoughts, oh, Heavenly Father, whatever they're facing, God, we just ask, God, that you give them deliverance, that you give them healing. God, that you give them joy, oh, Heavenly Father. And we ask that you do it now, oh, Heavenly Father. And we ask this in your son Jesus' name. And God, we continue to pray that you be with us. And God, we give you all the praise, honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And so for all of you that were viewing us live this morning, if you care to give, uh, we ask that you give on Giblify. If any of our members are viewing, ask that you log into the Giblify app and that you give. And we continually pray that you will be uplifted and that God will continually guide you and see you through with all that you're dealing with. May God bless you and keep you is our prayer. Amen.